Good day, kings and queens. Today's video is titled Cook With Me. One pot vegan meal. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Remember, love is the main key. You become blessed, bless somebody else. And we're going to jump right into this. Okay, these are the ingredients you'll need. You're going to need some whole grain pasta. It's called rotini. Basically, the curly ones. You want whole grain. We're going to keep this healthy. You're going to need some pinto beans. Any kind of spaghetti sauce of your choice. You know, this is vegan, so there's no meat. So you want to get some kind of sauce that has, um, I got roasted garlic and herbs. Some kind of sauce that has some seasoning to it or season it up yourself. You want to get some okra. Um, you could cut up some fresh okra or um, freezer okra is fine. You just don't want the canned okra because all the seasonings might throw off the seasonings you choose to use. You want some corn. Now you can use fresh corn, corn in a can, or um, um, this corn. I like to shuck it because it's sweeter, but you don't have to shuck it. You could just get some corn in a bag or um, in a can. But if you can, get you some corn and we're going to shuck it. It tastes a lot better. One tomato. This cheese is optional for the vegans. You don't have to use cheese, vegetarians. We're going to sprinkle this cheese somewhere in there, but it's optional. I'll show you how to do that. That way they can have it with or without the cheese. You're going to need a half an onion, some celery. I already chopped the celery before. Some seasonings, um, garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, and some seasoning salt. So. All right, kings and queens, let's get to it. Okay, kings and queens, so I have some water on, boiling. I'm gonna let it get hot and a nice boil to it. And I'm gonna open up this bag of wheat pasta and just drop it in there. Now you all, the wheat pasta is going to have to take a little bit longer to boil because it's wheat. So you need to increase your boil time so it can be nice and tender. Okay, so now we have that boiling in the hot water. Next thing we're going to do is prepare our vegetables. Now, this corn I already shucked. I'm gonna shuck one. You're gonna um, cut up the half an onion. Cut it up kind of fine because we're gonna caramelize it and then we're gonna cut up this potato, this tomato. So when you shuck the corn, it's just real simple. Just peel it back, simple as pie. Now, when you get to the little furries, on here, you wanna just take your time with that so it won't be in your dish. Pull it at the end, pop it down like that. Get the rest of your little furries off of there. I call them little furries, basically the little strands. And also, Okay, you all, my camera fell, but we are going to keep on going. Nothing on stop this show. All right. So after you clean off all of that, you just rinse it off to make sure you get as many of the little strands off as you can. All right. So to shuck the corn, take you a knife that's kind of sharp with a flat end. Basically, turn it upside down, whichever way helps you. 
I turn it upside down because I noticed for me, I get more of the marcels off. And you just cut straight down it like so. Just cut it. A little pressure so you can get all the way down. And when you finish cutting, then you're going to break them up. They'll be like, just like in the can or frozen, except for a lot sweeter, tastier, and healthier. Then when you get to the onion, cut off that hard part. I'm going to keep the onion separate because it's going to go into the pot first. Put a little pressure, cut down. Cut it again. Have it facing downward. That way you have more control over the onion. Okay. Then just get to cutting. No big deal. It's going to caramelize anyway when we get it in the pan. And for the sake of this video, I'm not going to cut the whole thing for you. Okay. Then when you get to the tomato, this is a one pot dish, so it doesn't matter if it's all together. Just cut it in the middle. And same way you did the onion. I'm going to cut that into little slices too. And then you're going to cut them into chunks. Turn it around. A little pressure. And you have your chunks going on. Okay, kings and queens. So I put in, I have a little non-stick frying pan right here. And I use this avocado press oil. It's kind of like vegetable oil, but it's healthier and all natural. And it doesn't stick as easy as vegetable oil and olive oil. So if you have that, use it. If not, use some olive oil or vegetable oil. Just make sure you're watching the heat because it will stick quicker. So... First thing we're going to do, add in the onions. You want to get the onions in there first so they can caramelize and that'll take a little longer to cook than the other vegetables. Let's get them all in there. Again, this is just half of an onion, half of a yellow onion. You have a wooden fork, just um, use a wooden fork so you won't mess up your pot. Get it all in there. You're going to see a little browning at the bottom. That's what you want. That's caramelizing and getting all that good fragrance and seasoning out of the onion. Bring it to the middle of the pot just so it can cook a little faster. Another way the onions to cook down a little bit faster, sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on it. Just some regular sea salt. Sea salt is a little bit healthier since this is a healthy video. Just pinch your sea salt in there just a little bit. Okay. 
and just mix that sea salt in. Next, I'm going to add the celery. Now, I'm going to use about, eh, I guess I would say about a stock of celery. I already had this celery frozen already, so. Another tip, if your celery is frozen, let the onions cook down a little bit longer before you add the celery because it is that water in there. We want it to steam, but we want to make sure we get those vegetables cooked down really nicely. This is about a, maybe a stock and a half. And you just mix that up as well. Bring it back to the center. So they all can be cooked evenly. Take a little lid of your choice and put the lid over it. Let us do its thing. You'll know when it's ready because it'll be nice and brown and tender. And those onions will look nice and shiny. Okay, so I drained the, um, I strained the rigatoni, got all of the water out. Put that to the side. Now at the bottom of the pan, I'm going to put some of that spaghetti sauce, about half of the bottle. I'll let that heat a little bit. Just stir it one or two times. This recipe is very simple. Next thing we're going to do is add our okra. Make sure your fire is on low because we still have another step that we need to do, but that's in a separate pan. Just add your frozen your okra in there. Give that a quick little stir. Now remember we have those pinto beans over there soaking. They've been soaking for probably about three or four hours just to make sure they're nice and soft. So it can blend in really nicely together. Give your um, onions and celery a quick little stir. Let them finish caramelizing. Now. You should already have your beans in a separate container having them boiling. So if I forgot to mention it, just let them boil. They're going to take the longest. So as they're boiling, we're going to strain them and add them into this tomato mix. So after you had an okra in there, it's not going to take very long to cook. We're going to add in the corn. Give 
just add it in like so yes y'all this corn right here when you shuck it i'm telling you baby it is so tasty i don't know why maybe because it's fresh but yes put all that corn in there Also, add the rest of your corn and your tomatoes. All right, give it a quick little stir. Now at this point, the onions and celery is nice and fried, caramelized in that oil. So we're gonna add those as well. Okay, just get all that in there. All that goodness. Yes. <laughs> so your fire is still on a low heat and your pinto beans are still back there cooking. Stir it up. break up that corn a little bit it'll break down later on as well okay your strain rigatoni add that in there get all that in there I'm just gonna use half right now just to make sure it's not overpowered with rigatoni if I need to add more later I will well, half probably would do it because I still want to taste everything else. And you don't want it to be too dry, so I want to make sure this is enough where I can taste everything. Give it a quick stir. Now that spaghetti sauce we have on the side, we're going to use that too. But we're not going to put that in until we put the pinto beans in. That way it could be nice and moist. We don't want this one pot meal to be dry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we strain the pinto beans. Just add those right on in there. Now you're going to take the rest of that um, spaghetti sauce, put that in there, put it all in there. Okay. Add in your seasonings. Now with the seasonings, you want to do it lightly and taste as you go. because your sauce is already seasoned. So I put the seasoning salt, the black pepper, sprinkle some garlic powder in there, sprinkle some onion powder in there. It's very important to taste as you go. So make sure you have you a fork or spoon on the side or something. 
so you won't be double dipping back into the pot <laughs> so we're just gonna stir this in up in there really good this is nice and hearty this is almost like a minestrone soup you are except for it's hearty stick to you you can also serve it with um some ciabatta bread or some garlic bread some texas toast or just some what plain wheat bread on the side or you can eat it just like this but i know a lot of people like bread i even know some people that eat it with cornbread so you know if you want some bread on the side you could serve you up some bread on the side All right, we're gonna turn that fire back up just a little bit. And that's okay for me, but I, like I said, I like my moist. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water to the bottom of my spaghetti sauce. Cause it's actually still a lot of sauce in there. You just add you a little water and put the top on, shake it up. Gotta get the rest of the sauce off. And then I'm gonna pour the rest of the sauce onto that. Now remember you did add a little water, so that's when you might need more seasoning. That's why you taste as you go. Stir that up really, really good. Make sure you get all the way to the bottom so you can get that sauce that's been down there cooking really nicely at the bottom. Oh, this is looking and smelling good, you all. I'm going to give it a quick little taste to see how much more seasoning I need in here, if any. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's tasting good just like that, but I'm going to add more seasoning. Add some more seasoning salt. Be real light on the pepper because I'm not trying to make this into a spicy meal. More garlic powder. More onion powder. Make sure you're checking that fire, still nice and low. Another stir. Now remember that cheese I told you all about? If you're just straight vegan, meaning you don't eat anything from the animal, this is set here. Let me get another fork so I can do another taste test. delicious mm. okay this is good just like this you all but vegetarians who do eat the cheese want to sprinkle just a little bit of cheese on top just to set it off not a lot because this dish is so good you don't want to overpower it with cheese just to give it that little creamy fix on top. And then our fire is on low heat. Nice and seasoned. Just gonna put the top over it just to melt the cheese a little bit. Let it melt down to that last layer so it's gonna be a thin layer of cheese. And we're just gonna let that melt a little. Okay, so just let it melt a little bit. I'm going to plate this up now. I have a bowl. Go straight down to the bottom. That way I get some of that cheese in there. Ooh, nice and hearty. I'm not going to eat any bread with it, you all. 
and I'm trying to um, cut back a little bit, but I have a nice hearty bowl of this. This is delicious. I thank you all for watching Kings and Queens. Remember to subscribe and check me out on my next video. I have so much more content for you all. Have a great day.